Hi, this is Simon from 222 and I'm here for DV247 and I'm going to talk you through the Tractor Control S4. The Tractor Control S4 is a four deck controller and it has a four channel mixer section in the middle. Um, I'm going to spend a little bit of time just talking you through the controls, hopefully get you up and running out of the box as quickly as possible. So we'll start by looking at the actual layout of the controller itself. As you can see, it's a portable lightweight unit which you can easily fit into a rucksack and it's plug and play so you don't need to take anything else with you. It has a built-in audio interface into it as well so you can run uh, two stereo balance jack outs straight into an active monitor and you're good to go. So as we look at it, it's a fairly standard layout as per usual. We have four faders here, each one of those can, um, corresponding to the A, B, C, D decks. We have two jog wheels, one on either side. We have control over deck A and C on the left hand side and we have control over deck A and D on the right hand side. The jog wheels are high performance jog wheels and they will affect the audio as and when you touch them. In true traditional CDJ sense, if you place your hand on the top of the jog wheel then the audio will stop and then if you place your hand on the side of the jog wheel to slow the audio or speed the audio up. So what we'll do is the first thing is we'll start looking at how to actually load a track onto Tractor using the Control S4. So right in the middle we have a browse button. So if I hit the browse button that takes me into browse mode. From there I can access any of the crates that I've set up within Tractor itself. And the way that I do that is by scrolling through the crates that I've selected. As we look at the left hand side and the right hand side here, they're mirrored of each other. So I'll talk you through one side and anything you learn on one side, you can just directly transpose onto the other side as well. So if I want to actually scroll through my crates in Tractor, I can use this controller here on the left hand side, or I can also use this controller here to jump me back to my track collection. So as I'm coming down on my crates here, you can see that all of my different songs are being shown up. I'm going to use the demo tracks that are provided with the Control S4 as you buy it and Tractor because then obviously for you guys it will make more sense and you can get up and running straight away as opposed to trying to hunt down music that I'm using on the video itself. So once I've found the crate that I'm interested in, and as you can see I'm on the demo tracks here, if I jump into the middle section now there's a big browse button and this will actually allow me to go through the different tracks that are on them. So once I've found a track that I've wanted to load on, all I need to do is I need to decide which destination I want it to go to, whether I want it to go to A, B. So I'm going to choose to put mine on A, and so I've pressed the load button and the track will go in. I've got to make sure that I come back out of browse mode again to actually access into Tractor as it is. So I've hit the browse button again, and I'm in. Straight away you can tell that the information's on there because basically the control unit is lit up so I'm aware that the track has been loaded onto deck A. So if I hit play now, you can see stuff's coming out, we've got music playing and you could run on and just let that go and select the next track if you wanted to and you do that in exactly the same way. You'd go into your browse mode, go through your directory, choose where you want it to go but this time obviously you'd load onto deck B so that you had two tracks running at the same time. So the beauty of Tractor and the beauty of the Control S4 is it's allowing you not to have to look back to Tractor all of the time. So you can actually concentrate on your DJing by using the S4 as the control unit for it. So if we look at the channel strip on A, we've got a three band EQ as per usual, with high mids and lows. And obviously as we affect those, they will affect the sound and shape the sound as we want it to come through. Also at the bottom here, you've got a filter and you've got a low pass filter and a high pass filter. Each one of the decks within the Control S4 and Tractor has this filter built onto it. So if I go to the left, I've got a low pass filter. And if I go to the right, I've got a high pass filter as well. Really useful for filter sweeps and to use whilst you mix in. And obviously it allows you, if you've got two tracks running at the same time, to sculpt a bit of shape so that both of them don't sit and don't clash as well. So Tractor comes with a whole host of effects that you can use within it and you can assign effects to different decks as you see fit. The way by which to assign the effects to each track or to each deck is actually to choose which bank you're working from. So if you notice at the top here, we have an effects unit, an effects unit, an effects unit, an effects unit. These effects units relate to these sections up here which are called the effects bank, effects bank one and effects bank two. You can have up to four effects banks running at once if you wish. 
If I choose to keep just two effects banks and decide to have effects bank one affecting decks A and C and effects bank two affecting B and D. Again, it's entirely up to you how you want to set this up and I'd actually suggest playing about and finding out what works best for you. I have three favorite effects that I use all the time. So what I tend to do is have those three effects running on each of the different decks. So to actually tell the Control S4 that I want it to listen to the effects bank one, all I simply need to do is press effects one there. So what this now means is that actually the Control S4 is looking at the effects bank number one that is up here. And I have a delay and a reverb and a beat masher put on. These three controls up here will affect each of those will affect each of those effects. So number three will be from a beat masher. Number two is going to be my reverb. Number one is going to be my delay. Okay, and as you can see, you can actually start to get quite creative with what you do and how you use it. Okay, and don't be afraid of experimenting as well and practicing and then finding out which effects work for you and which effects don't work for you as well. If I wanted all of my decks to listen to effects bank number one, I would just simply switch number one on all the way. The same with the effects bank number two, I could just go through and switch number two on all the time. I'd say for myself, what I found from experience is less is more because you can tend to get a bit cluttered and you want to try and avoid away from that, okay? But again, once you've learned how to apply one effects channel to one channel strip, it's exactly the same by just duplicating each time to go on to the other channel strips as well. So if we jump into this section now, obviously this is where we actually look to control the audio. As I said before, we've got a standard jog wheel. So if I put my hand onto the top of it, it's gonna stop the music. We've got rewind, we've got fast forward. And in the same way as a CDJ jog wheel works, if I want to slow anything down or speed anything up, I do that by touching on the side of it as well. For people out there that might actually want to cut as well, the crossfader within the Tractor S4 is pretty useful because you've actually got a gradient on it that you can change and move about as well. So you can actually shape the crossfader curve to either be a nice gradual mixing curve or you can have that as a sharp cutting crossfader as well for anyone that wants to try any chirps or twiddles or crabs or anything like that. If you finally get to the end of the track in that way as I have, you press Shift and Q again, it will actually jump you back to the start of the track again. When you import a track into Tractor, it will actually analyze it and it will try and put a beat grid over it as well. And it will often set the first Q point as the start or the first downbeat of the track as well. So to go back and play again, I'm just gonna hit play and then we're gonna have some audio coming out. As you look at it here as well, we've got a loop engine within it. Now, Tractor's clever in the way that it sets the B grid and it will actually set loops or loops of various lengths for you. So at the moment, I've got it set to a two bar loop. So if I press that, or two beats, sorry, should I say, it will actually just keep on looping that two beat section over and over and over again. Now I can actually determine whether I want to increase the length of that. So I've put that up to an eight beat loop at the moment, or I can actually go all the way up to 32 beats if I wanted to, or eight bars, whichever way you want to work in it. In the same way, I can go all the way back down as well. And you'll notice on the screen that as I'm moving this down, going from four to two and then to one, the amount of the loop, is changing as well. When I want to come out of that loop, all I need to do is press this left rotary encoder down and it will jump me out. Tractor will keep me in time as well because I have the snap and the quantize function switched on. Those of you that are starting off, it's really useful to use that in the first instance as well because what it means is that it will alleviate any scope for error or anything like that. And it'll actually allow you just to get comfortable with using the equipment and not have to worry about keeping things in time. So once I've decided I've found a loop that I want to keep, so let me set a eight bar loop from here. Tractor will just keep on continually looping that section over now. I've got a sample deck at the base here, which I can use as well. This has been put onto track C. So the way that I have set mine up is I've got track, just normal track decks on A and B, and then I've got sample decks on C and D as well. 
Within these four slots at the bottom here, I can have 32 beats of audio or 45 seconds of audio, whatever comes first, okay? The way that I now pull a piece of audio out of the track that I'm playing and designate it or assign it to one of these is quite simple. Literally, I have four controls here, which are for the sample decks, and all I need to do is decide where I want one of those to go. So let's say I want to put it onto sample deck number one. All I'm gonna do is press play to start with. What you'll see at the moment is it's automatically pulled that audio slice out and put it onto the sample deck, okay? It's running in the background on loop, but it's running at mute at the moment. And the way that you know that it is running on mute is because it's not highlighted. If I press it again now, you'll see that the button has lit up itself, but not only that, the audio within the tractor software has also become highlighted. If you're not sure if it's running or not, another way that I always double check is just to look at my line in outputs on my channel strip as well. They're firing, so I know that I've got something on C now. So I could actually push A down and push C up and C will just keep on continually playing that loop over and over again now. So it might be that I actually want to load something else into A and mix on the fly with something else while running a loop in C. It could be that I just want to put simple single one shots sound effects, ambient textures, a vocal or anything like that onto any of those sample decks and I'll just go about doing it exactly the same way. The beauty being obviously as well is I could do that on deck A whilst queuing that through my headphones and not have to worry about putting that out through the main feed so then I can just keep on assigning things onto the sample decks there as well. Tractor has a combination of hot cues and loop points that we can assign to any one of these one, two, three, four buttons down here. So let's imagine that we actually want to put a hot cue in at a point. A hot cue just simply means somewhere a designated point that you put in within the track and you can jump back there. So let's say that I want to put a hot cue in now. If you have the snap and the quantize function switched on, which I advise you do when you start, what it means is that even if you're slightly off of pressing the Q button, Tractor will automatically pull it to the nearest beat grid or where it thinks you were actually aiming for in the first place. So if I press number two, you can see now that the two tab is lit up in blue, which obviously means that it's a Q point, but also as well, there's a number two there as well. So when I press two again, we'll just keep on going back to that number two point. It could be that you might want to just put a three and a four in as well. And then you can jump between those. And you can carry on doing that, okay? Let's imagine though that you've decided actually I've placed those cue points in and I don't want them anymore. Simply to erase them, all you need to do is hit shift, hold your finger down on shift, hit two, three and four, and you can see those spaces will free up again. So that means you can then go through and keep on adding things in. Let's say now that we actually want to do a combination of cue points and loop regions as well. Tractor has an intelligent brain within it. It will actually set loops for you or you can set loops in yourself. So you've got two ways in which you can set a loop region within Tractor effectively. The first way is the manual way and I'll show you how to do that. In the loop engine area here, you've got an in and an out button and literally it is as simple as pressing where you want the, the loop to start and then pressing when you want the loop to end. So let's imagine we're gonna place a loop point in here, so. There, and automatically it will start looping again. If you've got this snap and quantize function switched on, it makes your life a little bit easier again because you haven't got to worry about hitting it perfectly until you get more practiced and you become a lot more comfortable with setting them. Once that loop point is, is in, if I want to assign it to any one of those, it's simple of just pressing the button of where I want it to go. You can see though that the loop regions are identified by being a green color as opposed to the hot cubes which were a blue color, okay? Every time I press two now, we'll keep on going back to that point, okay? So it will keep within that loop region. I know that that loop region is active as well because it's actually highlighted within this area here. Let's imagine though you get to the end of that loop point and you want to carry on. All you just simply do is press the left hand rotary here and it will make that loop region unactive. The loop region's still stored. If you want to go back to it, you just hit number two, but it's not active. If I want to go back to it and make it active, I've got to make sure I press number two and press that rotary encoder again there. You know you're in because basically it's, it's highlighted and I can visually see that it'll keep on looping back. 
The beauty of Tractor as well, and using the Control S4, is that you can vary those loop regions in length if you choose to. So at the moment, I'm on eight beats, or equivalent to four bars, but let's say I actually want to take it down to two bars, and I might want to take it down to one bar, and then keep on going down like. Again, once you want to come out of that, you can. So if I give a little bit of volume now, we can actually be able to hear what we could do with that. Okay, and then you just carry on from there. So it's good for drum rolls, it's good for fills, it's good to actually for build ups and things like that. And again, it's about experimenting and work out, working out what sits best for you. Okay, so the other way of actually putting one in and not doing it manually by that is literally to use the engine within it. So what I have to make sure is I have to make sure that the engine is active in the way that it is. And then literally all I need to do is set the, or determine the length that I would like my loop region to be. So let's say we want it to be four beats. And then simply all I need to do is when I want that to start, is press the button and you can see when you look at the screen obviously now that highlighted region is there again and let's say okay we want to put that into number three again I would just press number three we've got these sample deck regions down here as well and again I was talking about them earlier on let's say now we've got that loop region and I want to take it and I want to put it into sample deck number one all I would do is just press the play button again it's running in loop in the background but it's in mute mode at the moment so make sure to hear the audio that you press it again as you can hear now though because I've got two audio sources running at the same time obviously the amplitude has increased so just make sure you cut out the fader of the one that you don't want anymore and then that loop region will continue to go in the background. Okay, again, remember with the effects units, let's say now I want to affect this loop that I've got here, I need to tell it which effect bank I want to listen to. I want it to listen to number one and I want it to affect. So I've got a beat masher on number three. This is the variable amount that the beat masher is going to affect. So actually this is timing in terms of a beat masher. With the reverb, this will be the amount of reverb and with the delay, this will be the amount of delay, okay? So you'll hear now, when I switch these two on, okay? So that's the beat masher kicking in and then the reverb taking on as well. So, and again, you can apply effects on there. You could have a different string of effects on effects too and actually have that affect it as well. And obviously then you could then say, okay, I want you to listen to effect two now. Okay, like that. If you actually want to scroll through your effects as well from using the S4, all you literally need to do is press down on shift and then whichever effect you want to scroll through. And you'll see now, if you look at the screen, when I'm pressing that button whilst holding effect, it's actually running through all the different effects that I've got within Tractor, okay? There's 50 plus effects for you to choose from, more than enough, I think. Again, you can see we're coming up towards the end of the track now. So if I hit Shift and Q, we'll jump straight back to the beginning of the track as well. You can use the loop engine to actually scroll through Tractor as well. So let's say you've got a really long track, it's got a 64 bar intro, you only want to play the first eight bars and then you want to jump forward by 32 beats, okay? Well, you can do that with Tractor, again, by using the loop engine. So let's now jump to 32, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come out of that and I'm gonna go back to the beginning. I've got this set to 32 now, can you see? When I move this left rotary encoder, Tractor's jumping forward 32 beats at a time, but it's all perfectly kept in sync and it's all perfectly kept in time as well. This actually allows you to navigate yourself to a predetermined point within a track very quickly and very effectively, but also keeps you perfectly in sync and perfectly in time at the same time. And you could actually jump through a whole track like that as well. And you can jump back as well. Okay, so let's take this down. Let's just have a real quick recap on what we've looked at at the moment. So we've looked at the effects banks and how we can apply those to the different channels. We've also looked at what each one of these channel strips does. My best advice to you is just to concentrate on one channel strip to start with. Once you've got one done, it's just a case of duplicating them again because they're all exactly the same, okay? Let's have a look over here. So we've got the jog wheel. We understand how the jog wheel is operating simply back and forward like that. Again, 
If you want to scratch with it at all, you can go into your preferences setting and actually have a look at setting up the crossfader. So you've got a slightly faster crossfader curve on it, or obviously if you want to mix and blend with it as well, you'd set it. But again, I really urge you just to spend a little bit of time playing about with it and finding out something. And you know, you may well find that what works for me isn't necessarily going to work for you, but that's the beauty of Tractor and the Control S4 as well, is you completely bespoke it to your own individual needs and whatever you feel comfortable with. The only other thing I want to run over really quickly is the loop recorder section within the middle. And this is unique to the Control S4 at the moment. What this allows you to do is it allows you to record on the fly, overdub on the fly, and then assign that somewhere as well. So let's have something playing in number on channel A. First thing I have to do is I have to tell the loop recorder where I want it to listen, okay? So I'm gonna make it listen to the cue point at the moment. And just to, just, just to actually display this to you better, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kill the audio at the moment. What I've gotta do is I've gotta tell the loop recorder engine which one of these channels I'm get, it's gonna to listen to. I'm gonna get it to listen to A, and I need to press the Q button to do that, okay? In this control area here, I have a record, play, size, and undo. The first one that you wanna look at is the size, because that's telling you how much of a slice you're taking out of it, all right? So at the moment, you can see when I scroll through on the screen, it's changing it. Again, tractor works in beats, so that's gonna be four beats, eight beats, so on and so forth. I'm only gonna take four beats to start with. When I'm ready to take it out, literally all I need to do is hit the record button, okay? And you can see it goes into record mode. It's playing automatically now because it's taken the audio from track A, okay? The dry wet mix in the middle is going between what's coming out of the master output, which is nothing because we haven't got any channels switched up, or the wet mix there, which is what's coming out of the loop recorder, okay? You could now, get it to record again. So the track is still playing in the background, okay? So I'm gonna hit record again. Okay, and it'll keep on overdubbing and overdubbing and overdubbing now, but you can hear it gets messy. So the best point to use this is actually to have different contrasting audio sources to run off, okay? So let's say we weren't too happy with what we did there. If I hit undo, it will take it back to the original point again. So we've still got that first four, four bar loop, sorry, four beat loop that's running in the background, okay? Now what I need to do is I actually need to tell it where I want to where I want it to go. I can assign that loop to any one of those four sample decks, okay? And the way that I do that is by hitting browse and then one of the record buttons and then all of the places that I can assign that loop to will flash up on the Control S4. So I can put it onto any one of the four sample decks on the right hand side or any one of the four sample decks on the three. Okay, because I've already got something on sample deck A, that one isn't available to me at the moment. So I'm gonna put it into number two. Again, it's running in the background now, okay? So there's no audio coming out of it. So if we go to the dry mix, there's nothing happening. If I hit play and activate that loop, and push C up, there we go, we've got some audio coming out. With the four sample decks, I actually have control over the volumes and I have a filter on each one of those as well. There's a universal control to start with in that when I turn the left hand encoder here, all of the volumes of the sample decks are affected. And when I do the filter, all of the filters are affected again. The filters copy these filters here in that right is for a high pass, left is for a low pass, okay? But let's say you only want to affect one of the sample decks, okay? You can still do that with Tractor as well. If you hit shift, and then you hit number two until it's flashing, the green bit is flashing now. What that means is that when I affect either of those controls now, it will only affect the one sample deck that I've selected, okay? So you can see only the volume of sample deck number two is being affected only the filter of sample deck two is being affected as well. This is really useful now if you've got lots of sounds contained within your sample decks, you can actually create a bit of dynamic space for them by having different filter settings or different volume settings on each of them. It allows you to be creative with your mixing, which is the intention of the Control S4. If I wanna come back out of that, so I've got universal control over all four of them again, all I need to do is hold down on the shift button, press the one that I was affecting, it stops flashing, which now means again that that's gonna affect all of them. Okay, that's been about it. I've been Owen from 222, here for DV247.